Hey, welcome back, everybody. So, um, in the last episode, uh, if you watched it, um, you know that uh, we went away on vacation for a week, and um, while away, we all got sick. And as Murphy's Law would have it, um, it happened toward the end of vacation, and uh, two of us got COVID, including yours truly, which I'm still getting over. So, excuse my voice and my general appearance. Um, so it was very disappointing to end the vacation that way. So I'm feeling a little cheesed off, a little cheated, a little salty, maybe a little spicy even. And I was uh, convalescing and looking through some of my old sailing magazines and came to a realization that uh, I'm sure some of you have come to as well. And that is modern boats are just ugly. Uh, they've got no soul. So today's episode, I am going to compare classic plastic boats versus the new modern classic and prove to you that not only uh, are the older boats uh, probably cooler, uh, they may also be a better investment than the new modern classic, the new modern plastic. Uh, so um, we're gonna go through some numbers, we're gonna go through some pictures and I'm gonna try to make my case and just please remember this is just my opinion. So if you're saving up for that new plastic boat, the new modern one, uh, I get it, I get the appeal, uh, just not for me. In my opinion, they have no soul. And soul is important when you're buying a boat. Soul is important when you own a boat because you want to love your boat. You want to spend the time on it that you need to. And you want to want to spend money on it like you're going to need to. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you some pictures of some modern sailboats. And then I'm going to show you some pictures of some classic plastic sailboats. And you'll see from these modern sailboats, they basically all look alike. These are all different manufacturers. Uh, they all have their tinted porpoise peeper windows in the top sides. They all have their bow sprits. They all have their dual helms, which is just absurd, but I get it because they're so freaking wide you need them. Uh, but it's not like this is the America's Cup or some around the world race. You don't really need it. Um, so maybe designers could get back on the path and, and maybe make a single helm classic looking boat. I don't know. Uh, but they just, they all look alike. They're ubiquitous. Uh, so, and here are some classic plastic sailboats. And now look at these. These are some real beauties. You pull into a harbor sailing any one of these, you're gonna get some questions, you're gonna get some head turns, and you're gonna get some uh, uh, sort of great stories from sailors that used to sail on them, guaranteed. Uh, you've got a Baltic in here. You've got a Cape George in here. You've got a Bristol 45 five center cockpit in here. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. Not one of these costs nearly as much as a new 35 foot modern plastic boat. In fact, a modern plastic boat around 35 feet is gonna set you back $180,000 to start. Not one of these boats that I've listed here, these classic plastics is more, is listed for more than 140,000. Now I'll give the first person who can tell me which the most expensive one is this beautiful Morgan 38 hat that I've had made. I've had a bunch of these made because I love them. Even if you don't have a Morgan, you might think it's cool. And if you do have a Morgan, you, you should think it's cool, um, hopefully. And uh, I will send that to you at no cost to you and we'll figure it out in the comments. Um, but tell me which one's the most expensive in here and I will uh, confirm that. It's probably pretty obvious, but it's a close call between two of them. In any event, um, now we're going to play a game called Would You Rather? And I'm going to drill the point home of modern is not always cooler or better than classic. So if you were to, in our first scenario, if you were to show up at your high school reunion, would you rather be driving one of these cars or this car? Now, I understand that this car is efficient, modern, and probably good for the environment, but everyone has one. They all look the same. They have no soul. And speaking of soul, even BMW back in the, I think it was late 80s or early 90s, came out with this ad campaign, which I'll show here. Eyes are the window to the soul. Even they knew, their designers knew, that if they could make their cars pull at your heartstrings, you would buy them. And by God, it worked. These cars were beautiful. And people bought them and loved them and still love them to this day. I will say the new BMWs, oh, they all look the same to me. The classic ones, mm, I would take one of those in a hot second. Okay, next, would you rather? You're going on vacation, you're going to stay at a modern hotel, or would you rather stay at this cool Airbnb? I don't know. 
what would you rather do? Okay, another one. You're showing up at your friend's wedding or a dinner party. Would you rather show up looking like this in these modern clothes? Or would you rather show up in something classic like Great Gatsby? And sorry, ladies, I just didn't know what to put up, but I just know that a flapper dress from the Great Gatsby era versus modern dresses, you would be turning heads if you showed up in a flapper dress, unequivocally. Um, okay, let's say you are going to buy a very expensive house. Would you rather buy something that looks like this, where you're cheek to jowl with your neighbor and where every house looks identical and they're all very nice, or would you rather buy something with more soul like this? I think the answer is pretty obvious. Okay, I was gonna use bikes, but bikes didn't work. Modern bikes are way cooler than old bikes and I can put the pictures up here so you can see for yourself. <coughs> Excuse me, this is COVID happening live time. Um, okay, so moving on, transoms. When I was a kid learning how to sail and been around our harbor here in our, in our cove and, in, in, and along the shores here, um, we would see all these beautiful boats and someone pointed out to me the transoms on these and I learned about the wine glass and the other various shapes to transoms and how the naval architects spent so much time making beautiful boats because they were pieces of art and, and they are extraordinary even to this day to look at and I'm putting some up here. Um, first is new transoms. New transoms on all these boats look exactly the same. They look like they've been cut off, they look like a slice of watermelon from the backside, or worse yet, they look like the open mouth emoji, like this. And this one's modified because I modified it to look just like the transom of a boat. And if you look at it hard enough and look at it as if you're looking at it from boat from behind, you can see the two eyebrows look like helms, dual helms. Uh, they're hideous, I don't like it. And when they're open, it's just like their guts are pouring out. You can see their tonsils or something. Um, not a fan. And that moves us to the interiors. The interiors of these boats, they're all the same. And I feel like, and people are going to hate me for this, but I feel like the yachting world stole a designer from the RV motorhome world. RVs and motorhomes are the prairie schooners on land. They're prairie schooners, that's what I call them. And they too all look alike. And they're as expensive as a boat for sure. Um, here are a bunch of pictures of various manufactured motorhomes and they all look identical. And then you look at their interiors, they also look the same. And funnily enough, <coughs> excuse me, they look like the interiors of modern sailboats. And you know what? You get a splash of salt water down in one of these interiors, it's going to de delaminate in a hot second. Uh, they don't look like they're well put together. The, it all looks sort of cheap and Ikea-ish. Uh, no offense, Ikea. Um, but they don't look like they're made to withstand the test of time and be rugged. Conversely, my 43-year-old boat has a dark wood interior and it has stood the test of time. Water, no water, sun, no sun. It's still there, same wood, and it's gonna last forever still. Um, I just don't find the appeal of these modern interiors. So the last thing I wanna say about the motor boats before we get to the finances is, uh, on spec sheets on saledata.com, they look like they're gonna be lightning fast. Not necessarily so. I've raced a couple times against an Oceanus 35, late model, 2016, something like that. Um, <coughs> porpoise peeper windows, looks like a hotel, kind of sails like a hotel. I was, we did circles around it in a 1985 Sabre 36, and the spec sheet on, on the Sabre 36 does not come close to that of the Oceanus 35. Yet, on the water and the proving grounds, no contest. In any event, no offense, uh, just my opinion, and I just feel like the designers have lost their way and they all look the same. Now, cost. Okay, quick finance lesson here. If you own a home, you're going to understand this. If not, then you're going to pick up real fast. So um, if you finance a $180,000 boat, and let's say you finance all 180000 just for illustration purposes, because your boat's probably going to cost more than that. You finance that at 20 years, 5% interest rate, because you can finance a boat for 20 years. Uh, your monthly payment's going to be 1200 bucks, 1200 bucks a month. So if you're not using that boat, you're throwing 1200 bucks out the window um, or out your port, your porpoise peeping port. Uh, now, over the life of that loan, 20 years, if you keep the boat that long, you're going to pay $105,000 in interest payments, $105,000 in interest. 
I could buy a whole nother boat. Uh, so give that some thought. And if you're stretching to buy that boat, boats cost a lot of money because not only is it a boat, you got to buy the dinghy, you got to buy the motor for that dinghy, you got to buy the mooring, you got to buy a slip, you got to buy a place to store it, you got to buy insurance, um, you got to pay to haul it and put it back in the water, maintenance, fuel, um, excuse me, ah, COVID. Anyway, uh, versus, for example, what we did. Now, again, there are three of us who bought this boat. Different, not for everybody, but it does work, and it can work if you do the numbers and figure it out and have some people you think you can work with. Our boat was listed at $35,000. We ended up paying twenty eight five dollars for it. We did finance eighteen five dollars at seven years on a commercial loan, uh, which worked out to be a monthly payment of two eighty five, dollars which means for each of us, it was less than $100 a month, which is less than my phone bill. Uh, not a big financial burden. Um, we could have paid cash, but we wanted to keep dry powder in case we wanted to make some upgrades, which we did. So we paid $28.5 for the boat. We paid $3,600 for a new jib. We paid $2,600 for a parking pad to store it in my backyard. We paid um, $1,600 both to put it in and take it out. So total $1,600 for the season. We paid $2,500 for some new cushions in the V-Birth. We went to Hamilton on a shopping spree and spent $900. We bought a huge dinghy for $1,200. We had an outboard. Um, we paid $450 for the mooring, $250 for the dinghy dock, uh, $150 to have the rig tuned, and paid about $1,100 for the annual insurance. Plus, uh, I think it was $135 to register the boat. All in, less than $50,000. Now, another key difference between Financing boat for 20 years and a boat that's 50,000 all in is that boats are not liquid assets. Now, so if you buy that boat at $180,000, you cannot turn around and sell it tomorrow. You're gonna to be hard pressed to find a buyer. It takes a long time, could take a year. Not like a house. And a house is an appreciating asset. A boat is a depreciating asset, just like a car. As soon as you drive your Porsche off the lot, it loses value. As soon as you drive your brand new boat off the dock, it loses value. It's never gonna be more worth more than it was the day you bought it. Most of the time, there are exceptions to every rule, I get it. But like a house, which appreciates, unlike a house, which appreciates in value in a good market, and you can sell in short order uh, if the market is good, uh, 10, 20, 30 days, 40 days, maybe 60, 90, uh, a boat's gonna languish on the market for a long time. Just look at Yacht World. Um, so if you need to, unload that boat, it could take some time. So if you're stretching, be careful. Now, I feel better. I feel a lot better. I feel like I've made a good case that classic plastic is every bit as good and is sometimes better than modern. And if you bought a boat for 30,000, and let's say you had a budget of 180 and you bought a boat for 30, you could put a whole new engine in that boat. You could put new sails on that boat. You could do redo the top sides. You could do whatever, and you'd still be well ahead of the game. And you're not gonna lose sleep over owning a boat for 30, 40, 50,000 dollars. 180,000 or more, that could be a problem. And stretching that over 20 years, it's gonna cost you 105,000 dollars in interest alone. Give it some thought. That's my case, don't hate me. Uh, I would love to hear some comments. And uh, in two weeks time, I'm going down to take a marine diesel class in Rhode Island. I'm really jazzed up about that. And, uh, and that's it for this week. We'll be back next with some more fun stuff on the boat and spring is right around the corner. Thanks for tuning in.